hello and welcome back to this channel once again now in this lesson we are going to start a new course that is calculus 3 or better still multivariable calculus now in this particular lesson we are going to look at functions of several variables and we are going to look at how to find the range and domain of these functions now if this is your first time on this channel do well to subscribe to the channel like the video and share the video to all your friends now let's get into today's lesson so previously in calculus one we looked at functions of single variables or better still functions of only one variable and that was usually represented as we had y equals f of x now the function here y is said to be a function of only one variable and the variable in question is the variable x so this is a function a function of only only one variable or a function of a single variable single variable and that is the variable x now what this primarily means is that the function takes in a single x input to produce a single y output so an example of such a function we can be looking at the equation of a straight line so let's say we have an equation y equals 5x plus 2 so this is said to be a function of only one variable because it requires a single x input to produce its corresponding y output so this is an example of a function of only one variable now moving away from this that is functions of single variables let's focus on functions of several variables functions of several variables so functions of several variables on the other hand take in multiple inputs that is more than one input to produce either a single output or multiple outputs now we can consider the function that is giving us z equals f of xy now this is a function of two variables x and then y is a function of two variables which produces a single output value z so this is a function a function of two variables two variables and these variables are x x and y these are the two variables x and y so an example of such a function we can talk of the function that describes the area of a rectangle and that is given by a equals the length times the width this is a function of two variables and it depends on it depends on the variables the variables l and w the length and the width of the rectangle now we can represent this in the function notation form as f of l comma w and that is equal to l times w so this is a function of two variables it depends on the length of the rectangle as well as the width of the rectangle so for functions of n variables let's say functions of in this case two variables z equals f of x comma y z is said to be the dependent variable dependent variable and then x and then y are said to be the independent independent variables these are the independent variables what this primarily means is that z depends on the values of x and then y so x and y are said to be the input values and then z is said to be the output value now we can as well have a function that looks like this that is w equals f of x comma y comma z and this is said to be a function a function of three variables a function of three variables It depends on the variables x y and z 
an example of functions of three variables we can have the function that describes the volume of a rectangular box so the volume of a rectangular box is given by the length times the width times the height so we have this in the functional notation form as f of l comma w comma h and that is equal to the length times the width times the height so this is a function of three variables so usually you'll be asked to find either the domain or the range of a given function now what you need to understand here is that the independent variables of any function may be restricted to lie in some set d and this set is called the domain of the function so let's look at what the domain actually means so the domain of a function is nothing but the set of ordered input values that produces a unique real value for the dependent variable. So it is the set of ordered input values that produces a unique real value for the dependent variable, or we can have the domain to be the set of ordered input values that makes the function defined, the set of ordered input values that makes the function defined. And as well, we have the range to be the set of all output values of the function. So the domain focuses on the input values that's going to make the function defined. That's going to make the function meaningful. And then the range is focusing on the output values, the set of output values of the function. So here we have an example that is example one. We are asked to find the domain and range of the function f comma y equals x square plus y square. So let's try this example together. So we want to find the domain and range of this function. So first, let's focus on the domain. How do we find the domain of this function? So we have the function f of x, y, and that is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, this is a polynomial function of two variables, x and y. This is a polynomial function of two variables. And looking at this function, if you want to find the domain that is the set of ordered input values that makes the function defined it means that we need to focus on the input values and see for what input values are going to make this function defined now you realize that there is no restriction on the x or the y value now what this primarily means is that whatever value you are going to put in this function in place of x and y is going to make the function defined whichever values you you place in this function in place of x and y you are going to obtain a unique real value at the end. Therefore, we say that the domain of this function, the domain of this function is the set of all ordered pairs x comma y such that x comma y is the set of all real numbers in the two dimensional plane. The set of all real numbers in the two dimensional plane. Now, notice that the domain of a two-variable function is the subset of the two-dimensional plane. Since there were no restrictions on x and y, it means that the domain is actually the set of all ordered pairs in the two-dimensional plane. So, this is how we write the domain of a function. So, the set of all ordered pairs x, y, such that that is the vertical bar, you can as well replace that with two dots like this so such that x comma y is the set of all real numbers in the two-dimensional plane so we have a number of functions here let's try to find the domain and range of these functions so we are going to start off with example two so for example two we have the function f of x y f of x y and that is equal to ln of y minus 2x so this is a natural logarithmic function. Let's try to find the domain, first of all, of this function. So talking about the domain, we want to look at the set of all ordered input values that makes this function defined. The set of all ordered input values that makes the function defined. Now for a natural logarithmic function, or for a logarithmic function, we know that the argument here should be greater than zero. Let's say if you have ln of p, 
then for ln of p to be valid it means that p should be greater than zero therefore we are going to set this expression greater than zero so we have y minus 2x greater than zero we transpose negative 2x to the right hand side we have y greater than 2x so you realize that here we have a constraint we have a restriction the restriction is that for any value of x y should be greater than twice of the value of x so this is the restriction we have therefore to find the domain we say that the domain of this function is the set of all ordered pairs x comma y such that y is greater than 2x this is the domain of the function now to find the range to find the range of this function to find the range of this function first we are going to let z to be equal to ln of y minus 2x now notice that for the range we always look at the set of output values of the function so here what we are going to do is we are going to substitute the values of x and then y into this function having in mind the constraints or the restriction okay so whatever value we select for x y should be greater than twice of that value so let's say if x is selected to be one then it means that for y to be greater than two times of x now 2 times x or 2 times 1 is 2 therefore we can select y to be equal to 3 we can select y to be equal to 3 because 3 is greater than 2 times 1 good now let's substitute the values of x and then y into this function therefore we have z equals ln of 3 minus 2 times 1 and that is 2 that is 2 and therefore we have this to be ln of 1 now ln of 1 is equal to 0 so you realize that here we have a unique real value or real number for z now what happens if the value in here okay the value in this bracket the argument what happens if this is less than 1 and then greater than zero so let's say if what happens if this argument is between this open interval so greater than zero but less than one so if you have a value within this open interval then z is going to be a negative value so let's say if you have ln of let's say 0 0.5 and so on and so forth like numbers greater than zero and then less than one you are going to obtain a negative value for z and then if you have values greater than one you are also going to obtain positive values now since we have zero negative values and then positive values what this primarily means is that the range is the set of all real numbers so the range of this function is said to be the set of all real numbers from negative infinity through to positive infinity now let's move on to example 3 so for example 3 we have f of x comma y and that is equal to 1 over x minus y squared now this is a rational function and then you know that for a rational function the denominator is not supposed to be equal to 0 now if the denominator is 0 it means that the function is undefined so for the domain for the domain the denominator is not supposed to be equal to zero so for x minus y square equal to zero we have x to be equal to y square and then notice x is not supposed to be equal to y square because if x is equal to y square then it means that the denominator goes to zero so here also we have a restriction that is for any value selected for x it should not be equal to y squared or x minus y squared should not should not be equal to zero so for the domain we have the domain to be the set of all ordered pairs x comma y such that x is not equal to y squared or or the domain is 
the set of all ordered pairs x comma y such that x minus y square is not equal to zero so any of the two is correct for the domain now let's move on to the range let's move on to the range now for the range that is a bit dicey so we want to focus on the output values when we want to talk about the range now for the range first we are going to let z we are going to let we are going to let z be equal to f of x comma y so that is 1 over x minus minus y square minus y square okay now for this function first of all we are going to let y be any arbitrary value okay so let's say we are going to let y be equal to 1 now if y is equal to 1 now you can select any other value for y if y is equal to 1 let's try to find the value of x or let's try to solve for x so we are going to have z equals 1 over x minus now y square or 1 square is still is still 1 so we have 1 over x minus 1 now we want to make x the subject or we want to solve for x so we interchange the positions of these two components and then we are going to have x minus 1 okay we have x minus 1 equals 1 over z and then we can transpose negative 1 to the right hand side so at the end you are going to have x equals 1 over z plus 1 so we are going to have an ordered pair x comma y okay so an ordered pair x comma y which is for x we have 1 over z plus 1 comma y is 1 so for y equals 1 and then for any value we select for z we are going to have an ordered pair x comma y as 1 over z plus 1 comma 1 now x here becomes defined if and only if the value of z is not equal to 0 now so long as z is equal to 0 it makes x undefined therefore we say that the range the range the range the range is said to be the set of all real numbers except z equals zero the range is the set of all real numbers except z equals zero so we can represent this as now focusing on the number line focusing on the real number line we have this to be negative infinity and then this to be positive infinity and then we have zero in here now because zero is not included in the set we are going to have an open circle therefore we can represent this as the range is the open interval from negative infinity to zero so zero is not part of the set union the open interval from zero to positive infinity so this is the range of this function so at this point you realize that there is no defined approach in finding the range of a function it mostly depends on the type of function you are dealing with at the moment now let's move on to example four so for example four we have the function f of x comma y and that is equal to that is equal to the square root of four minus x square minus y square so the square root of 4 minus x square minus y square so first let's try to find the domain so for the domain that is the set of all ordered input values that makes the function defined so this is a square root function now to make this function defined what we need to do is to ensure that the expression under the square root should be either zero or greater than zero so for this to be valid it means that the value under the square root should be greater than or equal to zero so we are going to set 4 minus x square minus y square greater than or equal to zero and then 
we can transpose negative x squared negative y squared to the right hand side so we have 4 greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared and then we can also represent this as x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4 i mean they are the same therefore we have the domain of the function to be the set of all ordered pairs x comma y such that x square plus y square should be less than or equal to 4. This is the domain of the function. Quickly, let's move on to the range. Now, to find the range, we are always looking at the set of all output values. Now, for the range, we let z be equal to f of x, y, and that is the square root of 4 minus x square minus y square. Now, since this is a square root function, the smallest value we are going to obtain for z is when z is equal to 0 because the value or the expression under the square root cannot be a negative value. And so the smallest value we are going to obtain for z is when z is equal to 0. So let's say the smallest value, the smallest value of z is equal to 0. So again, how do we find the highest value? How do we find the highest value, the highest value, the highest value of z? So for the highest value, to obtain the highest value, what comes in mind is we need to select very small values of x and then y so that the expression or the value under the square root can become something big and then that will make us find the highest value of z. Now, what I mean here is that, for instance, let's let's say you have the square root of 10 minus x squared. Now, if you want to get the maximum value, you need to ensure that x is equal to 0. Okay, now if x is equal to 0, then you have the square root of 10 minus, minus 0, and that is equal to the square root of 10. Now, the reason is that, if you select any value aside from x equals 0, let's say any negative value or any positive value, because you are going to square at the end, it's going to reduce the value that is 10. It's going to reduce this value to a value less than less than 10. However, if you make it 0, then the square of 0 is still 0, and then you still have this value holding. So that is the idea we are going to carry here. So we are going to set x and then y to be equal to 0. So, for x equals y equals 0, for x and y to be equal to 0, it means that we have z equals the square root of 4 minus 0 square minus 0 square, and that is equal to the square root of 4 minus 0 minus 0, that is square root of 4, and that is equal to 2. So, the highest value of z that we can obtain is z equals 2. Now, since these two values are included in the set, these two values are included in the set because the smallest value is 0 and it's part of the set and the highest value is 2 and it's also part of the set. Therefore, the range of this function is the closed interval from 0 to 2. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.